In September 2011, a bushfire swept through the path of an Outback Ultra Marathon in the Kimberley. Six runners were trapped in the fire, one of those being 24-year-old Terea Pitt. Terea survived, sustaining burns to 70% of her body. She has recently unmasked and is now ready to tell her extraordinary story of strength, courage, survival and love. This is Terea's story. Hi, Terea. I'm really excited to have you on the Book Circle and welcome and thank you for coming. Not a problem. Thanks for having me. Everything to Live For is your memoir that is out just now. Um, and I read it and I loved it. I loved so much of it. I want to talk about what made you the person that you are now. Um, well, I think I've always had quite a strong personality. Um, I've always been really stubborn. And, <laughs> yeah. um, but I've also had a really positive outlook on life and I think that I got that from my mum because she's even more positive than me. So then you sign up to run an ultra marathon. Yeah and that, that's interesting because I registered my interest about six months before the race but because of the entry fee it was so, it was so high, I think it was about $1,500, I can't quite remember. Mm. Um, I thought that was too pricey mm. and so I wasn't going to go in it. And I'd actually been training for an adventure race out at Lake Argyle. Right. And then I got an email two weeks before the race yeah. asking me if I wanted to, to participate for free. Yeah. And I said yes, yeah. yeah. So you're running this marathon, you were there on your own. Yeah. You didn't know very many people, did no. you? No. No. If, if you can, tell us. So you, ran, you, you went past the second checkpoint. Yeah, I went and past. And you were given the all clear. I was given the all clear. Um, which is a bit disappointing, I suppose, because they knew that there was fires and yet they let us through. Um, so they let us through checkpoint two and I remember I was, I was pretty exhausted by this stage because I'd run about 25 k's. Yeah. Um, and I heard what I thought were trucks on the highway and I thought, good, I'm, I'm getting closer, I'm almost to checkpoint three. And I just had no idea that the noise I was hearing was a huge bushfire. We were sort of running parallel to the highway Mm. Um, and I think most of the competitors would have just assumed that it was the, you know, the big trucks that go on the highway. Mm. And then from there? Um, then from there, there was about, I think about six of us at the time and we sort of made a split second decision. So we could either stay on the valley floor mm. where there was a lot of spin effects and other stuff that we thought would be perfect fuel for the fire, mm -hmm. or we could run up the gorge. I knew that fires went faster uphill, but we just thought because there was less trees on the hill, that that would be a better option. Mm. And so there were five of you that huddled together. I think there were six of us. Six yeah. of you. This is where for me, when I was reading it, the idea of the human spirit came into it and humanity. I loved how the boys tended to you and Kate. Yeah, and in a sense, fantastic. In a sense, yeah. that's why you girls survived. Tell us about your memory of that. Well, to be honest, my memory of the event is quite patchy. And I think that must have been because I was in shock. But I do know that the boys who were running behind us, they, they sort of tended to us, gave us water, mm. sat us down. Um, made a sort of a, sh a shade for us out of their clothes and everything. They sort of came onto the scene mm. where all six of us had experienced something that no one should have to experience. Um, but yeah, I just think they did such a good job, mm. yeah. I particularly love the moment when you talked about um, your friend Bonnie uh, yeah. and she worked for the ambulances, ambulance service. Tell me about that. Um, well, I think at that point, it, it had been about four hours. Um, and the local paramedics, and in Western Australia, all the paramedics are volunteers. Mm -hmm. Actually, I'm not sure about all, but in, in rural areas, mm -hmm. they are. And I was a volunteer for the, for the St John's Ambulance as well. Mm -hmm. um, and I saw one of the girls that I worked with, and I said, hey, hey Bonnie, and she just gave me this blank look. And I said, it, it's me, it's Terea. And I just saw tears starting to roll down her face. Mm. 
And it was at that point, I think, I, it just sort of triggered that maybe I wasn't as good as I thought I was. Here you are, you're now 26, yeah. and you've got a massive future ahead of you. You've got yeah. a massive future in terms of career, in terms of health, in terms of love and marriage. Yeah. So how are you feeling about that? Are you feeling strong enough? Are you feeling... Yeah, I'm, I'm optimistic about the future. So I've got a lot of projects happening next year, such as the 20K like Argyle Swim. I'm going to do the Great Wall of China. Well, not the whole thing, but no. a, a section of it. <laughs> yeah. I think I'd be there for years if I did the whole thing. Yeah. Um, a section of the Great Wall of China to raise money for Interplast and doing the variety cycle from Sydney to Uluru. Um, and I think... I think people need something to look forward to in their lives. Yeah. Well, Taria, I can't thank you enough. Thank no. you for coming on the Thanks show. Thanks for having me.